it's on my mind all the time. I, I mentioned an amphibian. I think that uh, the appeal of slow and slow flight is strong for a lot of people, and it's very strong where we live. We have uh, high mountain alpine lakes all around us, and uh, you know nothing would be cooler than for us to just take off and fly up to a lake and land and fly fish for a while and come back home. I think I think that's the coolest thing in the world. So I'm, I'm very motivated to get to the point where we have other iterations of effective, efficient, quiet, amphibian capable flying. Yes, back there. Hi John, how you doing? My name is Ricardo Foster from the GB Beach area. I just wanted to uh, thank you for what you're doing and I have a, have a quick question. Can you give us a take on your greatest challenge and a great success that you have had in this product project? Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, a take on my green flight challenge? Is that what you're asking for? Yeah, what are your greatest challenge uh, with this product? The greatest challenge? The greatest challenge here has been communication. You know, everything that you see, every, every single thing that you've heard and that you see, I've been saying for a long time to people in private, and they don't get it. And so when you have a situation where, you know, you need to raise capital to do things the right way, there's this credibility gap, like, who am I? Well, I'm, guess what, I'm nobody, okay? We just have to do our work and somehow manage to feed our faces while we, while we do that. That's all it's ever been about. And we've managed through the same attitude that most of you guys have and that this organization displays. We've managed to do that and we will just keep on managing to do that until we're done. And, and a great success, please. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned high speed and uh, the Delta model, what, uh, what do you think the true speed be in the horsepower variant? Uh, I'm not going to talk about performance specifications at this point. Uh, first of all, you guys wouldn't believe me. And second of all, we don't know. We haven't seen that actually demonstrated yet, so it's a little bit silly to, uh, to talk about. As far as the specifications are concerned, I wanted a big engine in this thing. And uh, the biggest engine that Delta Hawk offered was 200 horsepower. So I, I designed the airplane for that. Now, at this point, we can't get a 200 horsepower Delta Hawk. We can only get 180, but that's fine. That's perfect for the Green Flight Challenge, as a matter of fact. Yes? Do we have a Delta Hawk engine? No. That's one of the biggest factors to whether or not we're going to make it in time. Uh, no, only in general terms. Yeah, only in general terms. Because it's a liquid-cooled engine, and we've got a really beautiful opportunity in terms of radiator space and the design of the uh, cooling depart uh, compartment, it doesn't look like there's any challenge there, but man, I've got contingency after contingency after contingency built in so that we can open it up and get more cooling if we need it. Yeah. It seems like you've spent a lot of time on molding and uh, the elaborate manufacturing processes. With all the unique aerodynamic things that you're doing, I'm wondering why you didn't go in a, in a more one-off, <laughs> rapid prototype direction. Okay, guilty as charged. Um, the question has to do with why did I invest so much time in modeling and, uh, and high level uh, design integration uh, instead of just getting something flying and prove things out and so on. And the answer is I can't do it that way. Uh, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy and to me this, this kind of breakthrough deserves to be shepherded all the way through, start to finish. Nothing would kill all of these technologies better than a doornail faster than to bring them into committee within the typical structure that we have for uh, aeronautical development. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with PhDs, in some cases PhDs who taught me some of this stuff, and had them talk the entire program out of existence in the span of 15 minutes. So it, it, this just has to be done, it has to be done right. So the fear is with how production tooling, that when the finished aircraft is a success, the production tooling is necessary, the money that's necessary will necessitate the tooling that other people will survive. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm 
I'm following the uh, the argument there. Well, I Production tooling doesn't exist. This is being built with the one-off. If we were funded according to the original plan, we'd be building production tooling. But this is a one-off. Uh, and I'm exploring ways that are uh, not tooling dependent. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff that looks complicated that isn't. And uh, I want to speak to that integration and design thing for just a second because if you take uh, you know, if you take a month to, save, to make something in SolidWorks, combine the attributes of 17 parts, you save huge amounts of assembly and complexity down the road. I mean, you didn't need that jig, you didn't need this part, you didn't need that weight, you didn't need this liability. It's all built in. And so I, uh, the way that the kit is envisioned is that everything that has a complex geometrical shape is built in a factory. And if it's built in a factory, it's got all the stuff in it. So my wing tip right here might have, uh, you know, it's got a complex geometrical shape, so it'll show up to the home builder as a finished product. But it's going to have the fuel, uh, the fuel cap door fully integrated. Okay, it's going to have the chase for the wiring. It's going to have the wiring and the lighting and the, and the antenna stuff built into it. So everything that's downstream complexity is built into the complex parts. I didn't hear that. Integral versus bladder tank fuel cell. Integral versus bladder tank or fuel cell. Uh, an integral is fine for this type of construction. It shouldn't be any problem at all. We have a capacity for a ridiculous amount of gas. If you're flying with uh, Jet A and uh, the Delta Hawk diesel in Synergy, you have a transcontinental, trans Pacific airplane. You can go anywhere you want to go. Uh, controls. Uh, one of the things I think is pretty cool about the cockpit design is uh, it's a little bit kid, kid in a candy store for me because I always wanted to be the, the guy in the F-16 on the pointy end of the airplane, right? So the cockpit experience up front is you're solo, you're surrounded by all the stuff you want. It's uh, not in your way, you've got a beautiful, unobstructed view. But right behind you is a standard side-by-side -side dual arrangement. So you can fly it solo, you can fly it tandem dual, you can fly it side-by-side -side dual, or you can be an instructor with two students. Or you can fly side-by-side -side sitting with your wife and you can put uh, your VIP 12-year-old in the front seat. How about that? Where do I ingest the cooling air? Uh, under the wing inlets. I'm sorry, under the wing um, under the wing rope fillet. We kind of mock that up. It's not that's not how it actually will be. In fact, they're a little they're way up. Uh, we're using uh, mostly wet layup, but I've got some infusion parts uh, for vacuum assisted resin transfer. I'm not using any pre. Thank you all for your questions. It's been a real pleasure. We're going to take this party to the Aero Innovate thing, which is in the Innovation Center. Uh, that's where we're we'll kind of be uh, hanging out for most of the day today. And then we'll be around there from time to time if you have any questions. Thank you very much.